All right, when you look at this graph and you look at this equation, something seems to be a little off. Because when I look at x squared minus 1, I know that x cannot equal 1 or negative 1, because those would both make my denominator 0. So naturally, we would think that x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 would be my vertical asymptotes. But if you graph it on your calculator, you notice that there's only one asymptote and it's at x equals 1. So what happened with this guy? Well, the answer comes when we factor the numerator and the denominator. If I factor the denominator, I get x minus 1, x plus 1. No surprise there. In the numerator, I have x plus 1. So look what happens when I cancel. It goes in there once and in there once. This entire graph is going to look the exact same as y equals 1 over x minus 1. This graph right here is the graph of y equals 1 over x minus 1. However, you have to, if you want to claim that it's the graph of this guy, then you must, even if you've canceled something, you must look at this value as being not in your domain. You are not allowed to use a negative 1 for x. So over here at negative 1, there's not a point. You have to actually make an open circle and leave that point out. The graph then looks like this. You have your two branches and you have a hole at the value of x equals negative 1. So if you have a function and it will factor and cancel to a simpler function, that's totally fine. So we're, we would graph f at x equals 1 over x minus 1. But since this is our original graph, you just can't ignore the domain. So if we're not allowed to use negative 1, we'll put a hole at negative 1. So let's do an example. Let's say you're supposed to sketch this graph. The first thing you always want to do when you are told to sketch a graph, if you don't know what it looks like, is find some key values. So first of all, let's find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, you let x be 0. So f at 0 is going to be 3 times 0 over 0 plus 4, which is 0 over 4, which is just 0. So it looks like I have a y-intercept of 0, 0. That would also be an x-intercept. But let's see if we have any other x-intercepts. Remember, to find x-intercepts, we let y be 0. So then I'm solving the equation 0 equals 3x over x plus 4. To solve it algebraically, I could multiply both sides by x plus 4. On the left, I'm just going to get 0 because 0 times anything is 0. And on the right, these cancel, and I have 3x. So the solution is x equals 0. So it looks like I get my origin again, and I don't get anything else. Sometimes you'll get more than one x-intercept. Another way that you could look at this is when you have a fraction equal to 0, all you really need to look at is what makes the numerator 0. Because if the numerator is 0, the entire fraction will be 0. Next, let's find the vertical asymptote. So you look at the denominator and say, what will make that 0? And the answer would be negative 4. So my vertical asymptote would be x equals negative 4. For my horizontal asymptote, I'm going to look at my lead terms, and I'm going to simplify that. Now the x over the x will cancel, and I just get y equals 3. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals 3. So let's just sketch what we know already. I know that I have an x and y intercept right here. I know I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. And I also have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 3. All right, at this point, you know the y-intercept. You know the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. You need to put in some kind of an x value to the left, well, I'd probably put in negative 5. 
the left of your vertical asymptote, in between your vertical asymptote and your x-intercept, so maybe the point negative 2, and then put in some point to the right of your vertical asymptote, or to, of your x-intercept. Let's make that a 2. So you need to find three points that will help you figure out where your graph actually is going to be. When I do that, I get the following answers. Once you get those few points on there, that's sufficient. All we're doing at this point is sketching. So if I have this point, it's in this quadrant, I know my graph is going to eventually hug this vertical asymptote and this horizontal asymptote. And for this one, the whole graph is going to be roughly looking something like this. Let me show the, the, you the exact graph. Here's the picture of the final graph. If we look at another problem like this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to write it y equals x and then factor the denominator x minus 2 x plus 1. That shows me that x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 are my vertical asymptotes. If I put 0 in for x, I get 0 over negative 2 which is 0. So 0, 0 is an intercept. If I put 0 in for y, 0 equals 0 would have to work as well. Now for the horizontal asymptote, I look at the lead terms and this simplifies to 1 over x and as x gets large, that fraction actually is approaching 0. So y equals 0 is my horizontal asymptote. And then if I put in a value to the left of this asymptote, in between the asymptote and the intercept, that's my negative 0.5, in between the intercept and the next asymptote, that's 1, and then to the right of my last asymptote, that's 3. That will give me some points that will help me graph this correctly. We had a graph like this earlier, and we established that there was a vertical asymptote because I can tell that from x plus 1. x can't be negative 1, so x equals negative 1 is my vertical asymptote. But notice there is a slanted asymptote. The slanted asymptote happens when the power in the numerator is exactly one larger than the power in the denominator. So to find that, I actually have to do the long division, and that's going to look like this. I need to take x plus 1 and actually do the long division. This is a division bar. If I divide it into x squared minus x plus 0, this is what happens. x times x gives me x squared, then I multiply and get x squared plus 1x. I subtract all the way through. And then what I get, the x squareds drop out, and I get a negative 2x. Bring down my 0 and repeat the process. x times negative 2 gives me negative 2x. And then negative 2 times 1 gives me a negative 2. I subtract all the way through. That's going to turn both of these into plus. The x terms drop out, and I get a positive 2 for my remainder. Which means I could write this as, since it's a, it's a division problem, I could write it as x minus 2 plus my remainder, and I, I'm actually, I'm just going to put that remainder there. The remainder would be put over x plus 1, and this part here is going to be so insignificant when x gets really large doesn't matter what the remainder is. When x gets large, this entire fraction is going to be so small, it's not going to affect anything. So this equation, if I do the long division and write it differently, when x is really large, it looks pretty much like y equals x minus 2. And that is your slant asymptote. So in essence, here's the rule. If this exponent is exactly one bigger than the one in the denominator, do the long division, ignore the remainder, and whatever this is, 
set y equal to it, and that's your slant asymptote. So let's look again at this problem. If you see that the exponent in the numerator is exactly one larger than the exponent in the denominator, do the long division, ignore the remainder, which is the same as this part, and the slant asymptote is going to be f at x equals x minus 2, or you could just say y equals x minus 2.